Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to Hidden Gems. In this series I look at some new games that maybe haven't got the fanfare that they deserve when they were released and also some older games that kind of slipped by the wayside. And in this video I will be looking at Dark Cloud for the PlayStation 2. Dark Cloud was developed by Level 5 and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. And it was initially intended to be a launch title for the PlayStation 2 when it released in early 2000. However, it didn't arrive until December 2000 in Japan. In North America, it didn't arrive until May 2001. And in Europe, we had to wait until September of 2001. So what exactly is Dark Cloud? Dark Cloud is essentially an RPG action game. It has been compared to such games as Ocarina of Time because of its similar style of gameplay, Vagrant Story because of its weapon system, and Legend of Mana because of its town building mechanic. In Dark Cloud, essentially what happens is you take control of a boy called Tone and he is tasked with rebuilding his town and other affected areas of the world because a Dark Genie has been released after a 400 year slumber. Now 400 years ago it very nearly destroyed the entire world and when it is brought back it sort of nearly destroys about half of the world this time. However, a fairy king ends up sealing all of the people and houses and livestock and everything like that inside these spheres called Atla. And this fairy king gives Tone a device called Atla Milia and he is able to then release all of these different uh, people and buildings and everything else from the Atla and restore the world how it was before the attack. So starting in his hometown of Nolan Village, Tone is tasked with going into what is essentially in each town a dungeon area and these are procedurally generated dungeons and they all have various different levels to them and you have to complete one level before moving on to the next one. Now, funnily enough, the actual world restoration element is kind of secondary. All you actually have to do in order to continue is find the key which is held on one of the enemies on that level of the dungeon and unlock the door in that dungeon. But as well as enemies there are various treasure chests with different items in them and obviously there are the atlas spheres and before you enter each level of the dungeon it will tell you exactly how many atlas spheres are on each level so that you know whether you may have missed any and you need to kind of go searching for the missing ones that you haven't acquired yet. Now to help you on each level there is a magical crystal and when you collect this this will highlight on your kind of mini map that uh, there are enemies or chests or um, atla that you may have missed in various different colours and there is also a map. Now until you have acquired the map the dungeon is completely blank even if you end up finding the magical crystal and the various different rooms and pathways are unknown to you. It is only either with the map or after discovery of these corridors and rooms that the whole level of that dungeon is made visible to you. Now once you have completed each level you can carry on down the dungeon as you wish or you can return to the surface and essentially open all of these atlas spheres and restore all of the buildings and the people and the roads and everything like that within the village. And the more of this you do, the more you kind of uncover what people want in terms of rebuilding their house, whether they want it improved or made exactly as it was beforehand. And in doing this, once you have kind of completed 
everything for a person's house they will find you and they will give you certain items so it's certainly within your interest in doing this however as i said before it is not mandatory as you are playing through your weapons will degrade and if they completely break they will essentially disappear now the reason you don't want this to happen is because it is not you that actually levels up and gets stronger, it is your weaponry. Once it has defeated a certain amount of enemies, you are able to upgrade these weapons and make them stronger. So letting them get to the point of disrepair is obviously not something you want to encounter. On every single level of the dungeon, there is a secret area. And these can be unlocked by obtaining a certain secret item. In this first dungeon, you need some oil to be able to move the car into the second area. However, this item does change as you play throughout the game. Now, in this secret area, there are no Atlas Spheres. So you don't have to go into these back areas. However, there are harder monsters to defeat, so that will help you build up your weapons quicker and stronger and there are also stronger and better items to be found here as well so it is well worth checking these out where you can but again they are not mandatory and speaking of upgrading your weapons not only can you level them up so that they are stronger and more resistant to damage but you can also equip them with stones and gems in order to boost their attributes and with these stones and gems equipped when you upgrade to the next level the weapon actually takes on these attributes when it levels up as well and basically remembers them so for example if you have an attack plus one stone while you have that equipped your weapon has one extra hit point in terms of its attack when you upgrade it that basically gets fused into the weapon the stone gets used up but you no longer have to attach that to your weapon in order for it to know that it's got attack plus one so what you are then able to do once it's been upgraded is to attach another stone and further boost its power now when this game was released unfortunately its sales were quite poor and this itself is quite curious because the game did get rather favorable reviews scoring around 80 to 85 percent by various different reviewers and magazines and presumably it was those high scores that made sony decide in 2015 to put dark cloud on the playstation network in an upscaled version for the playstation 4 including 1080p graphics trophies remote play and share play features and at time of recording this is on the playstation network for 11.99 i have done a quick search for physical copies of the playstation 2 game and they start around 20 to 25 pounds so it's definitely worth getting the playstation 4 game off of the PlayStation Network if you were looking to acquire this game. So there we are, they were my thoughts on Dark Cloud. If you have also played the game please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If there are any games that you feel are a hidden gem and people need to be made aware of them please also let me know in the comments below or you can also tweet me at rightly wrongly. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and share where you can. Until next time, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.